Welcome to the uh, second session on research in social sciences. The first session introduced you to research and uh, what is uh, research, what is scientific research, what is knowledge building and how do we um, identify areas of interest uh, to carry out research and I also had um, given you a small task if you would like to do to identify your topics for uh, research. Now I come to the second session and this session is on the motivation to carry out social sciences research. So here uh, I request you to uh, share this uh, video with your friends who are also doing uh, research at different levels. At it could be at the undergraduate, postgraduate or PhD level and uh, also uh, click the subscribe button. So I will uh, use the PowerPoint, maybe some points that text that is written will be useful to you when you have to carry out your research. So let me move to the PowerPoint slides. So the question I'm trying to answer in this is what motivates social sciences research? Why do people want to carry out research in social sciences? Let's understand the purpose of human endeavors. What is the purpose of all human endeavors? At the end of the day, individuals are interested in increasing their welfare, their families or their organizations or the society, the community from which they come. They want to improve the economic and non-economic welfare of that group to which they belong. We also think about improving the welfare of life of plants and animals which becomes biocentric in nature. So we generally talk about anthropocentric ways of improving the ways of life of uh, people and biocentric if we belong to that, we believe in that philosophy, we may think that uh, how to improve the life of animals, of plants or take care of the natural resources that are available to us. The larger purpose of both biocentric and anthropocentric uh, philosophy of life is that we would like to improve the world that we live in. So from this I would like to see how uh, we understand our society. To me, these two words are important, functional and dysfunctional. And every social unit, social or economic unit, attempts to maximize their uh, welfare uh, in terms of economics would mean in terms of wealth or uh, welfare, in terms of uh, non-economic it would mean their positions of power, their presence in society, their uh, uh, happiness of uh, having a family and um, so many of these kind of things. So there is uh, the functional aspect of society where individuals are constantly discovering how to improve the quality of their life. Therefore, they are creative and they find that out. On the other hand, there is also one group of the members of society who are dysfunctional. Now, why are they dysfunctional? What kind of uh, activities do they take up when they are dysfunctional? How are they uh, reducing the efficiency of the society that they live in? How are they reducing the quality of life of uh, the group or the community they live in by being dysfunctional? Dysfunctional could be crime, various kinds of crime cheating or any of these kind of a thing. In an economic case, I would uh, I would try to understand why wouldn't people like to pay taxes and uh, what stops them from uh, not paying the taxes or filing their income tax returns. So 
they become dysfunctional in the sense that the government will never come to know that uh, uh, why these things have happened and uh, and they would probably try to escape by finding routes out that's being just dysfunctional but the larger question is why have they become dysfunctional and on the other hand the question is how do people become functional so understanding the dynamics of these functional people who are contributing well to the development of society and the dynamics of these dysfunctional people what makes them do what they do how are they behaving is there something common among these dysfunctional groups of people so how do they differ why do they differ and when they differ from each other how are they making the effect on society differently to me that is an important part that we need to constantly study we are looking for efficiency and inefficiency in the way society works in terms of resource allocation it could be in the way um, activities are carried on production is carried on in any of these areas the larger purpose again to me is to transform society there are many ills of the society and understanding the ills of society cannot be corrected unless we know how good societies are working that is where we need to understand this enormously complex uh, society that we are living in and uh, we want to research to bring about this economic political and social transformation we need to do that but to bring about this transformation we need to first understand how are people actually carrying out their day to day lives in so many aspects that we can think about research aims to identify these good ways of carrying out activities and the not so good or the bad ways of carrying out activities and finding out after analyzing what solutions can be done so that we minimize what is not good for the society and increase what is good for the society and to do this i believe that we need to uh, as researchers we will need to develop both creative and critical thinking now creative cr critical thinking because we need to uh, find out be observant be reflective we read about it we discuss about it and then we find out critically what is not right with the economy or the system what is it that can be actually developed or improved in the system so we need to be critiquing the many things that happen around us in society and once we are critiquing thing that's not the only job of a, a researcher the researcher's job is also to provide solution so after having understood the problem that we have in society what kind of solutions can we give them what is that solution that solution will come from another kind of thinking which is called as creative thinking so we need to develop both creative and critical thinking to analyze the, uh, the so social behavior and economic behavior and then provide answers which is using the cre uh, creative skills that we have we also need to learn to become micro a uh, way we need to develop the micro way of thinking uh, which a student of economics can very easily understand as micro economics even for the others a very specialist way of looking at it so somebody uh, who can uh, who would like to work on gender may uh, take up one particular issue in gender for example um, during the uh, pandemic that has happened how have women and their economic activities been affected and therefore what is the quality of life women have with in reference to the kind of jobs they were doing or in kinds of the thing at the same time we need to know these women have to be uh contextualize in the larger society in which we are operating so we need to develop specific knowledge about the working of self help groups for example but we also need to know what is the context 
in which the self-help groups are working. So we need to develop both specialized knowledge about gender, gender employment of women and work and women and motherhood, all those issues on one hand and on the other hand gender in the context of larger societal issues. So we need to develop both a generalist way of understanding uh, issues and also a very specific way of understanding uh, issues. Because unless we develop this generalist and specialist thinking, we will not be able to do research in a broad, open context. And uh, we need to uh, think. And let me also say this way, thinkers are not always right. We have had different kinds of thinkers, different kinds of philosophies, but not necessary that all of them have been right and not that they have been discarded. So what we do with different kinds of thinking is we learn to understand that thinking and we may develop further ideas from that thinking and you may actually see which of those ideas can work. So reading becomes an essential part of thinking. So we read different philosophies, different ideas, take up what we want to read, take up what we want to think about and then convert them into further ideas. Now let me come to the core of the subject. I was uh, trying to bring you to understanding. If this is a society that we are living in, then the motivation to research should come from this society. It does not have a standalone position. Social sciences research does not have a standalone position. It has to be the studying of the larger society in which we are taking up, even though we may want to study economics or sociology or politics or history or geography or psychology or any of the subject that we talk about. This has to be studied in the larger context of society. So keeping that in mind, looking into the uh, research motivation, I would say that we can have the first important way to look at is the theoretical uh, part of research. Will your research be aimed at working on understanding the applications of an already existing theory? Is it going to elaborate an existing theory, the ideas in that existing theory? Or are you going to enrich the existing theory with your research? Or are you going to develop new tools for testing that particular theory? So you can decide whether you are interested in developing this kind of research where you're looking at theory, building theory and critiquing theories and adding up to new ideas to a theory. That is one way to look at it. You can also uh, work for establishing a new theory if you are interested, if you are working towards that. You may work towards building a new theory itself. That is one motivation. The other one may be to look at the practical problems that we see around us and uh, what we learn about society. So applying something that has been done in another country into our country uh, to the local uh, uh, interest. So we could do that. So research can also be uh, trying to understand how the same problem has been happening in other parts of the world. What kind of solution did they find to their problem? Do we read them? Do we research on our problem with keeping in mind how others have worked the problem? And therefore, we might find better solutions of more functional societies that we could do that. Or it could even be that social scientists may continue studying a previously done piece of work. The idea, the theme that comes to my mind is called as um, Slater Villages. I do not know whether you have heard about Gilbert Slater. Gilbert Slater was uh, an economist and uh, somewhere in the early 1900, he was a professor at the University of Madras. And I remember reading about Slater Villages where he had tried to study uh, some particular village in Gambode in Tirnal Valley district in Tamil Nadu and he wanted to see how the villages were transforming. Later his students took up that study and even today there are studies by economists and sociologists who are studying the same village. So from early 1900 till now the same study of villages are being uh, done. Now that means that was an original piece of work that was done 
and other researchers have continued to study how these villages have transformed over these ages and how what kind of changes have happened. That is an example of how a previously done piece of work is being uh, research. So you could want you would you may want to do some research of that kind where you are examining the research of somebody done with something done earlier, but you are doing it in a different time period in a different context, and that can also be the kind of research you do because that can also motivate you to do research. And we could also try and understand the social phenomena that we are talking about about this dynamics of the society and we want to understand the social life and influencing the social welfare. We want to understand the cause and effect relationship of various social phenomena. You may be interested in that. You want to understand the various economic uh, relationship that exists between various economic agents for example and what is the outcome of that relationship on society, on psychology, on organization, a variety of issues that you may want to do and it, it provides the possibility when you study uh, research in social sciences, it provides you an opportunity to, pro uh, to uh, arrive at solutions for the different kind of social problems that are um, identified in society. You could also be looking, your motivation could also be to find out what tools you may want to use. Maybe there are tools that have not been applied to a particular problem. It has not been applied to a particular uh, case and then you may want to apply a tool from some other discipline into your discipline. You may want to uh, relate how these uh, tools can be understood to explain something else uh, in another uh, domain, a, a method that has not been used in some subject, anything like that. And it may also allow us to think about new ways of living. So if research is done using new tools, maybe new ideas can emerge and it can direct towards new ways of living itself. And it can help ourselves. Will it help ourselves also? Do, do we understand ourselves better that I'm capable of using a tool which was nevertheless used so far in economics, it has been taken out from uh, psychology and we are using that. That is how the study of behavioral economics has come. Trying to understand economic behavior of individuals, pure economics was not able to explain the answers to many of the economic decisions that individual takes and therefore it became necessary to draw tools from some other subject and apply it to economics. So beautifully it has emerged as the study of behavioral economics. So that, that's how we can take tools and theories and ideas from another discipline and uh, answer it here. And uh, sometimes when we do research we may also find answers to our own life's mission that uh, am I interested in carrying out this research further? Is it that I am interested in, interested in finding a career in? So the subjects that we take up, the ways we take up the subject, the way we have carried on research can also provide research and life solutions to our own uh, aspirations. And at this point, let me uh, help you with some tasks. Uh, from the broad interest that we have just uh, examined, you may now look into the narrow area that you have identified for your own reading and you may have refined those ideas. And once you have refined those ideas, you will be able to identify a specific topic and with that specific topic, you will be able to write that idea in a sentence or two. I want to research on A, B, C, D. So to arrive at that from the large body of knowledge you collected, you were reading, you have reduced it to something much smaller and much smaller and now I expect you to come to uh, being able to identify your research in such a very narrow term and say, I am interested in this particular issue. So when we do this kind of uh, uh, research uh, methodology, when you listen to uh, research uh, lectures, you will be able to process your ideas along with the lecture and arrive at something which is so essentially yours, something which you feel very strongly about, something has, that has interested you and that is how you will find your motivation to research.
So we, when we talk about motivation to research, uh, generally it is an academic, uh, it is an academic activity, but academic activity without a purpose is futile. And therefore this uh, research in social sciences is meant to improve the quality of life. And then from there, we are talking about transforming society. And once we are talking about that, we are talking about functional and uh, dysfunctional individuals. And also now we are talking about the purposes of research, where we are uh, understanding uh, the uh, motivation to research, theory building on one hand, uh, theory building, knowledge creation on one hand, the other one is a practical application of uh, ideas to a real-time problem and developing both critical and creative thinking and generalist and specialist thinking and ultimately uh, becoming one who uh, decides something for their life in terms of career and the areas that one may want to work as you go by. So I hope this session is useful to you and the next session uh, I shall help you to, I would want you to write your statement of the research problem and then we could move on to uh, reading uh, relevant literature. How shall we read literature? Because we often hear on our uh, supervisor or any of you, now research requires a lot of reading but then that reading can be organized, that reading can be done with a purpose, that reading can be uh, actually uh, used to achieve some goal. So the next session will be on research, uh, review of uh, research literature or relevant literature. So please share this video and uh, subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much.